Come on, oh, it's a bat. Get up. Guys, welcome back to another YouTube video. And today is a video you've been asking for for quite a while. I'm doing a review on my boat. And I thought, you know what, let's do the review out on the water. Let's do it when we're fishing. So today is Zach's last day. Zach, the intern, oh. sad day. He's going home tomorrow or the next day. Back to Montreal. But I said, Zach, what do you want to do today? He said, let's go largey fishing. So we're largey fishing. The first largey of the day, first largey in the new Alumacraft was a donkey. I'm going to give you guys a look. I'm going to release it. If you guys want to see the fish, the fight, the strike, you go over to Zach's channel. But look at this big girl. Guys, this is a Northwest Ontario hog. Look at that. Four and a half pounds. One of these during KBI would be real good. Bass tournament coming up. All right, look at that. Four and a half pound swamp donkey. Gone. All right, here we go. Drone in the sky, bass on a frog. All right, bass number two in my Lumacraft competitor 185. I'm gonna give you guys a little tour now, enough fishing. We're gonna get the drone down and I'll show you what this boat's all about. We're gonna start this tour off and we're gonna start off at the front with uh, what Mr. Weeb calls the dance floor. This is where, where you spend a lot of time on a tiller boat, maybe not as much, because you are fishing from the back, but any sort of bass fishing, casting for muskies, you are at the front. And what I love is this wide, wide casting deck. You can musky fish with two people out of the front, put another person in the back. You can have two people bass fishing in the front. So on the front, the business, moving this around is a 112 Altrex. I think it's been out for probably three years now. Basically it's the hybrid of a cable steer with one of these big cable pedals and, and that mixed with like a, a power drive or a Tarova. So it's kind of the hybrid of both incredibly responsive, just so fast. Um, I do like a Trova, how I can have it at the back of the boat. And then, uh, you know, for some situations I can let other people through first. But unfortunately with this, I'm kind of fixed to the front of the boat. Uh, as far as graphs go, we got two Helix 9s. I like one with 360. And if you guys haven't seen, that's what this big device on the front is. Essentially, that lets me shoot 360 degrees. I can see what's in front of the boat, what's beside the boat, what's behind the boat. Good for bass fishing, seeing rocks, logs. Uh, and then we're getting into compartments. Got two storage compartments in the front here. I keep my bumpers in here. Spare prop. This awesome little paddle. Okay, I can't even extend it all the way. Next, this, I carry all my soft plastics in. And if you come take a look here a little bit closer, you can see my onboard charger. There's a three bank onboard charger in here. And that charges my three trolling motor batteries. As well, I wired this into my boat. This is a 1500 watt inverter. And this is what I can use for charging drone batteries. It's got a USB for any sort of camping trips. It's incredible. Maybe not uh, what everybody needs, but when you're uh, filming, camping, it is nice to be able to charge things on the boat. This side, we got a live well. And to be honest, I don't use the front live well a ton. I use it for waters, drinks, whatever. Then we've got two storage containers on the side here. I don't even think I'm using those right now. Just some tools. And then I love this rod locker. It can handle up to eight foot rods right now. I mean, it's got eight slots in there, but you can probably put 12, 15 rods in. You can put multiple rods in there and eight foot super nice for longer bass rods, musky rods. There's a rod locker on the side as well, which does allow for longer rods. That's the tour of the front. We're gonna fish a little bit more and then we'll show you guys the back half, but I uh, hope that gave you guys a decent, decent idea what sort of storage we're dealing with because that's why I chose a tiller boat is the amount of storage, the fishability. I take a lot of stuff with me, so the more room the better. Now might be 
frog time, boss? Yes, sir. Oh! First cast. Come on. That's a good fish. That's a good fish. Oh yeah, that's a nice fish. First cast with the homemade frog. There we go. The modified frog. Oh wow, he's hung. Oh wow. He's hung good. Wow. Oh, he's off, he's off. It's not a giant, it's a very good fish though. So. Yeah, buddy. Oh yeah, oh yeah. Oh, God. oh he's off! No! That was such a good fish too. No way. That was huge. Did you see it? I didn't take I didn't look at it. I was just getting ready for a slow mo shot. Oh my How big do you think? Like close to the one you had. Uh, it was so close. It was like four easily. Wow. First cast. I oh can't believe God. it didn't stay after all that. I wish I had a more powerful rod. This is like technically a crankbait rod. It's a medium heavy, uh, moderate, fast. It's a bit slow for frogging, but you work with what you have. That was crazy. Zachary had a big one. Sun's getting low. Got to tour the back half of the boat for you guys yet. I'd like to catch one more, but gonna make sure we get that second half done before we lose our light. Finish casting this bait. Lily pads are so good. Like, summertime, hot, sunny day, those fish are looking for shade. They love to get under those lily pads. And it's like, you talk to any bass fisherman, frog fishing is probably their favorite. And it's pretty obvious, the explosions on the surface. Zach sounded like someone flushing a toilet. All right, guys, this is the back. This is the command station. Anyone? who fishes in a tiller, they really like this area. This is the reason why you choose the tiller is because you can spend your time at the back of the boat. No steering wheel, you save all that room up front. The motor's right here, super responsive for staying vertical on fish, for any sort of deep water fishing, walleye fishing, fall time fishing, amazing. This boat is powered by 90 Honda, four stroke, could be F90. Incredible motor, this thing is so smooth. Um, I mean, I've only ran it for a week or two, so I'm not gonna pretend that I've ran thousands of hours on it, but so far, first impressions, awesome. It moves the boat um, around, I think the best I've seen is probably like 34 to 35 miles an hour. I've been switching around with props still, so I think it'll get faster. Um, all right, let's, let's look at compartments. On the side here, this is one where I put a lot of tackle trays. Um, I don't know how many tackle trays I have in here. Probably 10, 12. You can also put rods down the side here, but Awesome for storage, really close to me, easy to get at. Up here, we have small compartment here, uh, bump board, fire extinguisher. Uh, in here, we got the cooler, super nice. It's got an insulated lid, so you throw some ice in there. Keeps all your food good. And then at the back here, this is one of my modifications. So this compartment up here actually folds in. So typically, if you had smaller graphs, you could fold them in, you could probably probably fit 10 inch screens in there. Um, I have 12s and I also want to utilize all the space back there. So what I did is I actually, I pulled this compartment out and I fastened it to the console. So this is permanent. This lid's never going back in, but now I've gained all of the storage. So, you know, keep a bunch of tackle in there, whatever you want. All the cables are hidden super nicely. On the back here, two 12 inch helixes. One of them has side imaging, mega side imaging. Super duper nice. Uh, yeah, two 12s is a lot of screens, but it's nice to have one dedicated to map, one for side imaging, the other mapping. And then we've got the console down below here. Got your horn, got your uh, aerator, bilge, all the good stuff. Bluetooth stereo, deadly for pumping tunes. And then I've got these trays here. And this is nice for just storing all my tools. I got my floro, got my in reach, extra pliers, tools, whatever. And these all lock. And that's the great part is all these compartments on here lock so I can keep my stuff overnight if I don't have a chance to have it in a locked garage. What's next? I guess just back here we've got battery compartment. I've got two batteries back here to run all my electronics. And here is my live well where we had that big bass in before. Nice big live well. You can hold a 35 inch walleye in there probably. And then these two beautiful pieces of plexiglass. These are wave whackers. And if you do any sort of back trolling, we're using your big motor to control the boat. It's, it's pretty crucial. Otherwise you will take so many waves over the back and nobody wants that. I've had boats without wave whackers and I have 
regretted not putting them on. So awesome, awesome product. They're made uh, in Minnesota, I think. And then last but not least, we got the Talon. This is a 12 foot Talon uh, on a sandwich bracket, which means it's sandwiched between the motor and the boat. You could also drill it directly into the boat. What a Talon is, it's a vertical anchor. So this one goes down 12 feet. So if you're in 11-ish feet, this pole will stick down into the water, into the mud, into the rocks, whatever you're fishing in, and it'll anchor you. Right now, we're too deep, so it just extended all the way. But incredible tool, it's one of those things that when you don't use it, you don't realize how important it is. Once you use it, you're like, I can never be without this. On top, I mounted a little, uh, little GoPro attachment, super nice. Amazing angle to just film everything in the boat. This is one last uh, cool thing. This is called the Illumitrack system. And this is a track system, so you can put rod holders on here, you can put a camera mount, GoPro mount, underwater camera, whatever you want. They slide, they fasten onto this edge. I mean, look how wide this is. I think it's an, I wanna say 95 inch beam. I gotta double check on that, but wide. Wide, wide, super nice, super stable. You can fish with a bunch of people out of here. In past videos, I've had, you know, four or five people walleye fishing in here for casting. Three is no problem at all, you could do four. Might be a little cramped, but uh, I think that's it for the tour. All right, well, we're gonna fish a little bit longer, but before we go, I want to thank the people that make this possible. Honda, Honda Marine. Alumacraft Boats, I've had a relationship with them for quite a few years, done photo shoots for them. Uh, I've ran their boats uh, pretty much for the past eight, 10 years, I don't even know, maybe longer, but uh, just so happy to be part of the family. I don't know what else to say, maybe we'll crack a couple more largies and, uh, and we'll call it a night. Before we hit this last spot, I just wanna talk about why I chose this boat. An 18 and a half foot boat is perfect for everything I do. I don't need to get excessive. I don't need a 250 on the back. Everything gets more expensive. A 90 is perfect, 30 to 35 miles an hour. I only fish a tournament or two a year, so speed isn't a big deal for me. This boat is plenty big enough to handle any of the waves the Lake of the Woods throws at me. I'm not bringing this thing on the Great Lakes. It would handle the Great Lakes, but uh, yeah, this, this boat is all I need. And um, Zachary's about to catch Big Largy. Sweet. All right, bomb it in there. Hopefully I'm not too in the way of anything, but. Stop talking, start casting. All right, that's the spot. Kadunk! Silence is key here. Do you think they hear? I think so. Here we I hope I know you real, you got. I know. That was a gross cat. <laughs> I messed up my one fish. My one fish, guys, I messed it up. I have slow-mo shot of it popping off. Yeah? I will we'll review it. Zach? Yes. How was your time at Thrive Visuals? My time at Thrive Visuals. It was honestly one of the best experiences of my life. Not only did I learn so much about filming, photography, editing, just so many life experiences too that I would have never have gained if I never came on this trip. Um, besides that, caught some fish, watched Jay catch some nice fish, and uh, just lived some great experiences. Guys, there are some exciting projects coming out in the next couple months that Zachary's helped me out with. He has done incredible, he worked his butt off this summer. Uh, he's probably gonna edit this video, so you'll get a little taste of his uh, his editing skills. And uh, if you're in the Montreal area or anywhere and you're looking for a photo shoot, some videos, whatever, he's uh, hit him up. Give him a follow, his YouTube channel is blowing up too. And uh, we got one last thing to show you, but we need to wait for it to get dark. But we're gonna head back to the launch and we'll see you guys in a bit. All right guys, I told you there's one more thing I wanted to show you. Look at this. She glows. This is like one of my favorite parts of the rig is I put LED lights all the way around. This is an aftermarket edition. It's wired into my nav lights and uh, just amazing for night fishing, for anything like that. And I'm gonna show you one other thing. So check this out. All right, I need to use my phone for this. All right, check this out. I'm going to this app. I gotta connect. All right guys, check this out. The last thing, look at this. These are my sonar pucks on either side. And my buddy Lane Mayer, Davy Plastics, custom made these pucks and check this out. I can choose any color. I'm still trying to figure it out because there's just so many options. Look at that. We got red, we got yellow, we got green, we got blue, we got more blue. 
we got purple. This is absolutely insane. It's gonna be so cool for netting fish, for night fishing, for backing up at the boat launch. And uh, yeah, it's my puck board too. You can see my transducer mounted onto there. Anyways, that is the final touch. Huge shout out to Lane for that. And um, not sure how this lighting is gonna be, but guys, this rig I am so happy with. I can't wait to uh, catch some real big fish out of it. Thank you guys for all your support. Thank you for watching, subscribing. It means everything to me. And uh, let's go catch some fish in this boat. I'll see you guys next time.